Welcome back to another video. <laughs> it's been a while, I know, okay? So the title of this video is Running versus swimming, what's the difference, which is better? And if you are part of the running world or if you're part of the swimming world and you're thinking of going to the other side or want to see what the other side is like, this is the video for you to watch because I am part of both worlds. I run and I swim. I do both every, every day, <laughs> pretty much. And I can give you my perspective on which is better for you based on where you're coming from, what you have to think about or consider if you're gonna to go to the other side. In a nutshell, there is no perfect form of cardio. There are pros and cons to running and there are pros and cons to swimming. So I'm just gonna give you the list of both and then you can decide on your own which is better, okay? So let's get started. Let's talk about running. So first of all, running. Running I really like because it's free. You can run around anywhere you like. Just buy a good pair of running shoes, MP3 player if you want to listen to music, some sunglasses, and then you're good to go. You just run, you run outside. The landscape keeps changing, and yeah, you get your workout done. Easy peasy, but you gotta consider the weather. So right now, it's pouring rain here in Vancouver, so there are days when you don't have the option to run outside. So what do you gotta do? You gotta go to a gym, or you gotta find a place that has a treadmill and do the same thing. And treadmills are boring. Treadmills are, like hamster wheels. It's not the real thing. I mean, there's no wind resistance and the pavement is always constant. There's no rocks, there's no mud, there's no potholes or things you need to be aware of for your body. So for me, the treadmill is the worst thing for me to get on because my body starts getting lazy. I can just tune out and I don't really have an effective workout when it comes to running on a treadmill versus running outside. So. If you like running, you know what I'm talking about. You like running outside, you like the wind blowing your face, the wind resistance, like the, when, you're, when your feet touches the pavement, it's the real earth you're stepping on. And then the scenery keeps changing. You can do it anywhere you like, but it depends on the condition, right? It has to be sunny, it has to be not raining like it is today. Another problem with running though, my, my aches and pains, okay? When I run, after every session, I, my body is sore. When you think about it, your foot is slamming, literally slamming onto concrete most of the time. And I know what you're saying. Uh, well, I'm wearing shock absorbent shoes or I'm wearing the latest technology in sole wear, yeah. But at the end of the day, your joints are just really just slamming into concrete most of the time. I have aches, pain, joint pain, feet ache always after every running session because I run intensely. I don't, I don't just jog, I run, I sprint, avoid obstacles on the road. So all of these factors, it, at the end of the day, your joints are, my joints in particular, are aching. So I always need some sort of pain medicine at the end of the day. In the long term, when you're really old, can you really do that? You know, when you're in your 60s, pushing 70s, 80s? I don't think so. Your bones are gonna really, really ache when you get to that level. But if you're like in your 20s or 30s, yeah, running is a good option. I mean, but you gotta consider like the long-term effects of running on your joints, on your knees, on your shins. It's, it's gonna hurt even more when you get older. It's free, the scenery keeps changing. Good excuse for you to go outside, but again, in the long-term, it's gonna hurt your body and it's conditional on the weather. Now let's talk about swimming, okay? Now, if you're a runner, you're probably considering, oh, I wanna, try swimming. I'm tired of having my, my joints aching all the time. Well, let me tell you something. Every swim session that I have, and I swim for like hours, and I do it intensely, after every swim session, my aches and pains are non-existent, okay? I don't have any pain after a swim session or the next day. I don't have any joint pain, seriously. Because when you think about it, you're swimming in water, and water there, there is no, there's no shock to water unless you're slamming into the water with a belly flop. Most of the time you're swimming with the water versus a pavement, right? You're, you're working against the pavement with your feet. Yes, you're swimming in water. Are you using your legs more? No, you're using more of your upper body, unfortunately. When you're swimming, if, when you're doing like the front crawl, for example, you're doing a lot of pulling motion. So you'll notice that swimmers, they got like these huge lats, they got these big back muscles. You're gonna develop that area a lot when it comes to swimming. When you're running, you're gonna develop more of your legs, your quads, your hamstrings, your calf muscles, right? 
the lower part of your body is going to develop more because your upper body is just swinging like a T-Rex. But in swimming, it's the complete opposite. Most of your upper body is doing most of the power. This is flutter kick when we do front crawl. It's doing mostly assisting, okay? It's not intense, it's a flutter. It's not a kick, kick, kick. It's a flutter, like fluttering of the heart, a flutter of the wings. It's very light. So if you do this, you're not really going to develop your legs versus running. Swimming is more upper body and running is more lower body. Like I said before, I don't get any aches or pains after a swimming session. But what I do get are other cons such as skin irritation. Any swimming pool, that pool has chlorine in it. That chlorine will absorb into your skin no matter what. If you're allergic to chlorine or if you're sensitive to that kind of powder, then you're going to get itchiness, you're going to get dry skin, you get red eyes, you sneeze a lot like I do, your hair will be damaged a lot. So if you color your hair, you got to avoid the water because the chlorine is just, just going to wreck it. At the end of the day, you're exposing your hair and your skin constantly to chlorine water and it will take its toll on your body like it does to me. Another thing is that you're going to be in contact with that water no matter what. You're going to have contact with that water in your nose, in your mouth, and in your eyes. And your eyes, nose, and your mouth are going to have a different reaction to all three. So for example, you will get chlorine in your eyes, you will get chlorine in your nose, and you will get chlorine in your mouth. So when you're blowing your bubbles, you're having contact with that chlorine water all the time. Sometimes you're going to swallow it by accident. You're going to snort it by accident. You're going to get exposed to it by accident in your eyes. So you have to be very careful as you swim. You got to wear goggles as you swim, obviously, but sometimes I catch a lot of people swimming without goggles or a swim cap. That's basics 101. I see a lot of people, they snort the water by accident. Yeah, it, it's going to hurt your sinuses for hours. I see people drinking the chlorine water by accident or forgetting to flush out that chlorine water after every session. When you exit the pool, you should be swigging some water and then spitting it out, rinsing and spitting it out because that chlorine is still in your mouth. And it's going to collect and a little bit amounts may affect your innards no matter what. So you get diarrhea, you get sickness, you get stomach ache, you get cramps, whatever. I've gotten them all. You just get yeah, sick. There have been a lot of incidences where I've left the pool session feeling just sick overall. My body is just sick of being exposed to the chlorine, sick of the dirt or filth that was left in the pool by other people. You name it, snot, dandruff, lice, dead skin cells, band-aids. I was swimming in a jellyfish sea of band-aids recently because people decided to swim with their band-aids on and you know what, guess what? Band-aids come off when exposed to water, when you're in the water. Plus, swimming is expensive, you gotta have to swim in a pool unless you wanna swim in the ocean and the ocean's conditional, the oceans are dangerous, it's got sharks, it's got rocks, it's got tides, you gotta deal with very, very extreme cold temperatures. The conclusion is, which one is better, running or swimming? And which is better long-term for cardio? Well, I would say that the best option for most people is to combine both. Like I said, running is mostly lower body intense, right? It's, it's mostly your legs. Your arms aren't doing anything. Whereas swimming, your arms are doing a lot of the work. Your legs are assisting. If you're a senior citizen, I recommend swimming instead, okay? Forget running. You're just, you're just gonna destroy your joints. Why bother, okay? So if you're a senior, stick to swimming. If you're a young person, I would say 75% running with mixed with 25% swimming. As you get older and older and older, that ratio, that proportion is going to change. As you get older, I want you to consider swimming more and running less, okay? Your joints will, will, will thank you when you're much older, okay? <laughs> Run less and swim more until you find that balance point. So when you're in your like, for example, you're in your 40s, you should be combining running and swimming on a balance like 50-50, okay? So for example, you like, you run on Monday, you swim on Tuesday. You run on Wednesday, you swim on Thursday, and then you take Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. That, that would be like a balanced approach. Sticking to just swimming or just sticking to just running. I don't know, I don't put my eggs all in one basket. I mean, I like other forms of cardio like rowing or bicycling or, you know, just anything that keeps me active, right? But 
if I had to choose, like if I was stuck with just running and swimming for the rest of my life, for cardio purposes only, then I would say that, yeah, I would seriously consider doing both. And leave a comment down below what you think about running and swimming, your, your experience, huh? if you've tried both or if you're experienced in one of these disciplines. If you really want to learn how to swim, visit 7dayswim.co. That's my website, my online course where I teach you how to swim from A to Z. And it gives you the workout plan. If you don't know how, where to start on your swimming journey, if you have no idea what gear you need or the steps to take, just sign up for my online course right now. It's on sale. Also, join our private Facebook group and network with over 3,000 swimmers from around the world. Ask questions and we will help you for free, okay? So you've got enough tools under your belt to get started right now. So what are you waiting for? Do it now. Bye-bye.